Okay, um, well first thing I should say is that in this video I'm using a new setup for the first time so please be patient with me because I'm not sure how well this microphone and new tablet system I'm going to be using is going to work but we're going to give it a go um, and what I'm going to do in this session is talk uh, you through the derivation of uh, the famous, certain famous if you're an aerospace engineer, Breguet range equation, which gives us an indication of what factors um, influence the range, uh, the distance that an aircraft can travel. So this is specifically for engineers at uh, Swansea University College of Engineering studying the EGA 302A module um, on aircraft design, um, but hopefully it's uh, useful for a wider range of students than that. So let's kick off uh, by just a few definitions. So we're going to call uh, in this derivation F the uh, rate of fuel consumption of the aircraft. So F is the fuel consumption rate, the rate at which an aircraft is burning fuel. And obviously this is going to be equal to uh, minus dW by dt. So it's uh, so if W is the weight of fuel on board the aircraft, T is time, then it's minus the rate of change uh, of the weight of fuel on the aircraft. Now let's assume, um, and we have to be careful about this assumption, um, that the only thing that's affecting the overall weight of the aircraft is the burning of the fuel, which, uh, depending on what type of aircraft you're designing on this module, may not necessarily be the case, but uh, for now let's make that assumption, and of course if the only thing affecting the weight of the aircraft is the fuel, then dW fuel is the same as dW for the aircraft. So from now on, I'm just going to assume whenever I write a W without a subscript that we're talking about the entire aircraft. And if that is true, then of course the fuel consumption rate F is also equal to minus dW by dT. Now let's consider um, let's consider this derivative. It might not be obvious why we do this at the start, uh, but that will become clear. Let's let's look at the derivative dWf by dr. So the rate of use of fuel with range, or the rate of use of fuel with distance, because that's what range is. Well, we can write this as in terms of something we already know or something we've already discussed. So d w fuel by dt divided by d r by dt. And of course we've defined above that uh, d w f by dt is simply the rate of fuel consumption. divided by dr by dt, uh, which is, which is so this is the rate at which the aircraft is covering distance. And of course, that is the speed of the aircraft. So v here is the speed of the aircraft. Um, I should, of course, if I'm being strict about my sign convention, include a minus in there, because we've assumed that uh, if you're using up fuel, the weight of fuel is going down, so that's that's why you should have a minus sign there. So now let's think about what range is. So just using this simple definition that the velocity is the rate of change of distance with time, and then integrating that definition, we get that the range, and in this we're going to we're not going to assume that the aircraft velocity is constant, so we, we are going to have to integrate rather than just simply rearrange that algebraic definition. I'm going to say that the, the distance travelled by the aircraft between times t1 and time t2, of course t1 could just be zero, um, is going to be the speed of the aircraft, the velocity of the aircraft, which as I said, we're going to assume can be a function of time integrated with respect to t. And if we substitute into that from things we know, and rather than integrate with and then it, rather than integrate with respect to uh, time, integrate with respect to w. So what I'm going to do here is 
make use of this definition up here to replace the dt in this. And I'm going to substitute in here and rewrite this as minus v over f dw. Now sometimes, uh, in some textbooks that you uh, use, you might find that this term here, the v over f term, gets referred to as the specific range. Um, so if you see that in a textbook, that's what that is referring to, is this v over f. Uh, what I've forgotten to do there, though, is replace the limits. So we're now not integrating with respect to t as we were in this version. We're integrating with respect to the weight of the aircraft. So this is simply the weight of the aircraft at t1 and the weight of the aircraft at t2. OK, uh, hopefully so far so good. So I'm just going to uh, scroll down this new system. That's not so easy, but I think that's how you do it. Good. Um, and I'm going to reintroduce or introduce some, some new definitions now um, to allow us to progress further with this. So first of all, we're going to say that eta is the propulsive efficiency of our aircraft. And in this version of the derivation, I'm going to assume that the type of aircraft we're dealing with is um, a piston powered, a piston engine uh, propeller aircraft. Where the power system, we've got some engine system of a specified power, we'll call this our engine, which is generating power, turning a shaft. This is a poorly drawn shaft connected to a propeller at the front. And it's the propeller that is providing the thrust for the aircraft. That's the thing that's uh, that's overcoming the drag uh, of the aircraft. Um, and the propulsive efficiency of this system here is the, is, is the percentage of the power uh, generated by the engine that actually manages to transfer itself down the shaft and through the propeller and then aerodynamically into the airflow. Um, so that's what the propulsive uh, efficiency is. Let's finish right in that. And I'm going to define CP, not to be confused with specific heat capacity in thermodynamics, but I'm going to uh, define CP as the specific fuel consumption. So this is the rate of fuel uh, consumption per unit power output. Uh, from the engine. So this is related to the engine. I guess this is related to the system that takes that power from the engine um, and through the propeller uh, delivers uh, thrust. So based on these definitions, uh, hopefully it's clear to see that uh, the power that actually makes it into the airflow to deliver your thrust is going to be eta times the power output from the engine and that the fuel consumption F is the simply the specific fuel consumption multiplied by the power of the engine okay just based on the way I've described these two definitions and this allows us to go on and write that based on the fact that power when the, the basic Definition you learned in school for power is that power is force times velocity. Uh, well, velocity is easy. That's just the velocity of the aircraft. Um, and the force that must be generated um, by this engine propeller system is simply the force to overcome drag. Um, and that's going to be equal to the inverse of your lift-drag ratio. CL over CD multiplied by weight. So that thing there is uh, sorry, I've written that the wrong way round. Let's see if I can use the rubber here. So this should be the inverse of your lift.
that ratio, which of course is CD over CL. That thing there, this is the ratio of your lift force to your drag force. We know that the lift force must be equal to the weight of the aircraft in uh, straight and level, non-accelerating non flight, um, leaving us with the ratio of this, or the inverse of the lift-drag ratio multiplied by the weight must give us the thrust of the aircraft. So we know what the, the power is now. So let's see if we can substitute some of these things uh, back up into this expression up here uh, for the range. So I'm going to take uh, this expression here and substitute in some of these new definitions. So the range is equal to the integral from W1 to W2 of, and then taking this expression here and feeding it in, we're going to end up with minus P CL OCD 1 over W and then all of that divided by CP times the engine power DW. Um, so how can we tidy this up? Well, first of all, if we switch the limits of the integral over, so instead of integrating from W1 to W2, we integrate from W2 to W1, uh, we can get rid of that minus sign. So we'll integrate from W2 to W1, and then we'll just do a little bit of tidying up before the, the next thing that we're going to spot that we can substitute in. So that's uh, that's the power delivered to the airflow. Remember, this is your lift drag ratio all over the weight of the aircraft, specific fuel consumption times the engine power, and that's integrated with respect to W. And I need to scroll down. Because earlier on we had that definition that the ratio of uh, P to PE was simply eta, so we can get rid of P and PE and just pop eta in there and we end up with this thing here. In fact what I will do is just to speed things up a little bit is bring that outside the integral so we'll go eta over CP. We can bring those outside the integral because they're both constants, as is CL over CD. We assume that you've got a lift drag ratio for your aircraft. And we're integrating W2 to W1, and all that's left inside now is 1 over W dW. And the integral of 1 over w is log w, and then when you pop the limits into that, we're going to end up with this famous expression for the Breguet range equation, eta over cp, cl over cd, times the log, the natural log of w1 over w2. Now, Let's just pause for a moment there and think about the significance of this in the context of design. And by this point, um, if you're studying EGA 302A and I've asked you to watch this video, um, you'll be able to think about, well, what aspect of the aircraft design am I taking responsibility for? And in what way does can I influence the factors in this equation? Uh, so if I want to maximize the range of my aircraft, well, this should all make sense. Uh, we need to maximize the propulsive efficiency of the system. So if you're responsible for the, uh, the propulsion system, then the thing that you have to work hard at achieving to maximize the range of your aircraft is maximizing the propulsive efficiency. Conversely, the specific fuel, fuel consumption, if your engine system burns a lot of fuel per unit power output, and the larger that number is, 
the smaller the range of the aircraft. So you're looking to minimize this thing here. The CL over CD or the uh, lift to drag ratio of the aircraft, well, that's the domain of your aerodynamicist. So hopefully aerodynamicists, you're working hard to drive this number CL by CD as high as you possibly can. Um, and then the other thing that, that affects the range is the log of, of the initial weight of the aircraft divided by the final weight, W1 over W2. Now, in the context of certainly the early stages of design, we tend to use this equation the other way around. We think about, well, we know what range we need to achieve. We can have good guesses at what some of these things are, and that helps us work out what W1 and W2 are going to be um, for our aircraft. Just to make the point, it's very easy to convert this into, rather than a range equation, an endurance equation. Um, of course, endurance is the length of time that the aircraft can remain airborne, simply because uh, speed is distance over time. So uh, to turn this range equation into an endurance equation, we simply divide through by the speed of the aircraft. So we've now got eta CP V CL over CD log. W1 over W2. And the complication we now have, this might not look that much more complex, but in terms of, um, I guess in terms of optimizing for maximum endurance, it's a little bit more complica complicated because CL over CD quite often is a function of V. Um, so it's not simply a case of um, maximize CL over CD, minimize V there'll be some optimum combination of V and CL over CD to give you your maximum endurance. So there's a derivation of the Breguet range equation and the endurance equation that naturally follows. Um, what I suggest you do in the context of EGA302A, aircraft design, um, is make sure you understand that first of all and really have a good think about um, how this affects the kind of decisions you need to be making um, in your aircraft uh, design uh, activities.